When Mark Zuckerberg first created Facebook, he ran it from a college dormitory on a single machine. With this simple setup, he was able to support hundreds of concurrent users from across the United States. But since then, Facebook has grown from a couple hundred to almost 3 billion users, far more than any single machine can handle. So how did they do it? The key lies in a simple but effective component called a load balancer. But before we get into how load balancers work, let's first look at what happens when an app like Facebook quickly gains large amounts of users. In the beginning, with just a single machine and a handful of concurrent users, things are quite stable. A single server can handle a surprisingly large amount of users without an issue. But as more users start signing up, a single server can get overwhelmed. Server performance starts to get worse, slowly at first, and then quickly. Users might notice that pages take longer to load or don't load at all, and the server's CPU, memory, or network interfaces quickly become a bottleneck. At a certain point, the server slows down to a crawl, and the application it's running stops working altogether. With this simple example, we can clearly see how a single server can fail when an application experiences rapid growth. Now, some of you clever users might be thinking, can we just make our server more powerful so that it can handle more users? The answer is yes, and this will help, but there is a physical limit as to how much memory or CPU power you can add to a single machine. On top of that, what if the hardware in this machine suddenly fails? Would you be willing to bet your application's availability on a single server? I'm not a gambling man, but I know a bad bet when I see one. A much better way to achieve the same effect is to clone your application and run it on multiple smaller and less powerful machines. We can then point incoming traffic to one of the many available servers. But if we do this, how will users know which server they should connect to? We'll need a component to direct users to an available machine when a request comes in. This is where the load balancer comes into the picture. A load balancer is a physical or virtual device that sits in front of your application. It's an invisible access point for your app and decides which server to route a request to. Using this component, you can easily and transparently add more application servers to handle an influx of users. You can also remove servers if they become unhealthy or when your traffic goes down. So that's the role of the load balancer. But one of the key things to know are the algorithms that load balancers use to distribute traffic to servers. Some are simple, while others are complex. And choosing the right algorithm for your application depends on what trade-offs you're willing to make. So let's look at three popular algorithms to decide what options are at our disposal. The first algorithm is called IP hashing. The general idea of this approach is that an incoming request source IP address is fed into a hashing algorithm. The result of this algorithm decides which server the request will be routed to. This also means that every request a particular client makes will always be routed to the same server. This can be useful in some applications, such as WebSockets, where clients need to maintain connectivity with one specific server. A problem with this approach is that it's dependent on the hashing algorithm to ensure uniform distribution of load across the application servers. If the algorithm isn't optimal, some servers can receive too much traffic while others receive too little. To solve for this problem, you might want to consider our next algorithm. This algorithm is called round robin. It works by distributing requests sequentially to each server in a circular order. For this to work, the load balancer maintains a pointer to which server is next in the queue. When a new request comes in, it forwards it to the server and increments the pointer. This is a simple and balanced algorithm that uniformly distributes traffic across servers. One drawback though is that it doesn't consider the load of each server it forwards traffic to. For this, we need to add a little bit more intelligence to how we distribute traffic. This is where our next algorithm comes in. Our last algorithm is called least connections, and it's what's called a dynamic algorithm. Dynamic in the sense that it intelligently determines which server to forward requests to based on how busy each server is. It does this by keeping tabs of how many open connections each server has to client machines. When a new request comes in, it picks the server with the least number of connections. This approach ensures that requests are sent to machines that are the least busy. Further, it ensures that no one server gets too overwhelmed. Now that you know what a load balancer is and some key algorithms at your disposal, you might ask yourself, how do I set up one for my application? One of the easiest ways to get started is to leverage cloud services like AWS or Microsoft Azure. Cloud providers offer virtual load balancers with built-in redundancy, high availability, and optimized performance. These providers also let you auto-scale your servers up or down depending on how busy your application gets. This ensures that your application can scale to the moon if it becomes an overnight success.